Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, thanks for having me on Hope Revealed. This is a fantastic show. It's a great platform. And I think you're a great voice for positivity and, and spreading hope in the world. So thanks, God bless and, and really, really appreciate everything that you do. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, so excited to be here, Matt. And this is the way you you're are. my hero. Well, really, thank you. What, what are you doing really? You are doing a lot of sports. You are helping lots of people and really proud of, uh, of our friendship. Oh, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it, Manuel. Just shut up and listen, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, like, boy, just be quiet and listen and learn the lessons. Do you know the name go. of that gift? I need to write that down. Uh, I know. My right. wife <laughs> wants me to pray about that one for myself. So, <laughs> you know, right around. Then, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you're, no, really. No, really. For real. For real. I need that gift. I do. That's amazing. It is a gift. And, and then just be able to apply that. Um, well, Richard, you know, thanks a lot for being here at Hope Revealed. And we're so excited to have you. I mean, obviously, I mean, besides probably the Prince, you're probably the most popular guy in the UK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you've got the, you've got the look, the hair. I mean, I, have, I've got, I just need the big, big bushy beard, and I look like Prince Harry. There you go. Right, and you've got a new. You've got the children. I mean, today was a big day for you, right? It, it was. Yeah. So I picked them up, and they were full of beans. So we're gonna have a nice weekend, relaxing, and uh, start the whole week of it next week. It's very quiet in the house for my wife and I. I mean, that's amazing, right? And then, do they even know that you're taking them to Disney World, or should I should I go ahead and post that later? I didn't know. I was I didn't know I was taking them to Disney oh, World. Oh, sorry, it's a surprise. We'll save that for later. <laughs> no, I, I think we should do <laughs> actually. Uh, uh, we're gonna have a chill weekend. Uh, that Hey, I'm Matt Crump from Matt Crump Ministries, and um, here's something fun. I have cancer, stage four cancer. I've been battling for quite a few years. Um, through this battle, I've been able to experience several things in my life that have been pretty good. Um, I never thought that cancer would be a vehicle for me to reach the world. I thought it would be singing or writing or doing something else, but here it is, freaking cancer. Um, so yeah, it sucks. But let's fast forward past the suck part because suck happens for all of us, right? So what I've been able to find through that is an opportunity to help people with their obstacles in life. Lord knows when I was told I had eight months to live, that's a little bit of a life obstacle. <laughs> I mean, you die, it's over, right? So what do you do when you feel like you are facing up against that life obstacle? And I've been able to use all my experiences through my life. When I was a drug addict, alcoholic, uh, I was in the military, been married for almost 30 years now to a woman who deserves a medal for being married to me for that long. Um, it's been awesome to be able to take all those experiences in my life, plus the cancer, and be able to help other people with what they need in their life. So we've been able to do that in a few different ways. Uh, Matt Crump Ministries has, has what's most common to people that know me, and that's the hashtag God's Got This Movement. That's my first opportunity to do something, and that's a book that I can actually say is finally published, that it's available like everywhere. So you can go online to amazon.com. Be great if you go there, because I want bestseller status. Honestly, it's the selfish part. Uh, we have a program called The Flip, which is a, a coaching program, a group coaching program. It is an, an eight step program that provides people understanding and understand how to get through what we call FLIP, which stands for Faith, Legacy, Identity, and Purpose. When they have clarity in those four areas of their life, their number one goal, that life obstacle that's in the way or something they wanna attain, totally possible, right? So another area in Matt Crump Ministries, we have a, an outreach to ministries in Africa. And this time we've got a couple of orphanages under our care, and we're very passionate about reaching people for Christ, and discipleship is at the core of what we're doing there. We have an opportunity to disciple leaders and pastors to, to create and plant other churches in the area, as well as make an impact in the lives of kids over there with food, uh, education, and the love of Christ. For me, I feel like there's a couple of areas that you can help with Matt Crump Ministries. One, honestly, the first one that's most important to me is you, helping yourself. That's why these programs are out. God's got this, the flip. Uh, that's why I have another program as we travel called Life 2.0 Realignment. There's all kinds of facets to what we do, but it's for you. 
I really think you need to check it out on our website. Uh, the other thing would be that perhaps you have uh, an ability to give. Maybe you have an abundance in your life. That's awesome. I would love to be a person who helps partake in your abundance because we've got places where you can sow seed. You can sow seed into Matt Crump Ministries and I guarantee you that as we do this thing together, it's gonna to bring change into people's life. I wanna give you the opportunity to be that person to help us to make a difference in the world. Uh, you can go to godsgotthis.love backslash donations and there's an opportunity there for you to find out how you can give on a one-time basis or if you want to do it recurring you can do it that way as well uh, one of our shortfalls is always money so i'm not afraid to ask for it if you've got it i'll take it and we'll use it well It's pretty obvious that no one on Star Trek really wanted to give in, right? This big giant thing comes your way and they're like, ah, resistance is futile. They're like, okay, let's just give up, you know? Just give in to this bored collective mentality. Well, if our hearts are deceitful, if our hearts are even sick, then who or what can we really even trust? But God's word is absolute. I want to tell you something today, that culture is not truth. God's word is absolute and truth. Culture's not truth. Yet many times in my own life, I've allowed circumstances, I've allowed situations to creep into my own life and cause me to be a less than follower of Jesus. It's caused me to be a less than husband. It's caused me to be a less than father. Many times I could justify why I would trade it out. And other times I was just completely unaware, sucked in by subtle seductions. I'm asking you a question today. Is a less than life really worth it? Think of a deal. I remember when I was in the army, and Robin and I, we got paid every two weeks, and we had housing. I didn't think about money that much when I was in the Army. I had a paycheck coming every two weeks. I knew I had food all the time. I knew I always had a place to live. When I got out of the Army, things were different. <laughs> I had to sell vacuum cleaners, and that sucked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can live a life where resistance is absolutely essential. My friends, we are living in an essential time. It's essential that if you say Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you actually pay attention to what he says to do and how you do it. It is essential that no matter what is being spoken to us in our culture, in our world, in this, in this entire world, that there is an absolute truth that never changes. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. Culture does, but he doesn't. It's essential that we understand the truth. It's essential that we live it. During the midst of all this time fighting the cancer and going through everything we went through, I came on the stage here one day and was leading worship, and I started seeing black lights, and my head was killing me. I didn't let you all know, but I was stupid, and I should have probably got off the stage, but I didn't. But I was having seizures on the stage, had no idea what was going on. I never had it before, you know what I'm saying? So it was something totally different, and I uh, was Mr. Macho Man and went a couple more days without going to the doctor, and finally went to the doctor, and they said, you need to go to the ER now. We get to the ER, and the doctor comes in, Mr. Crump, it's bad news. I thought, I know, it's a sinus infection. <laughs> no, you've got bleeding on your brain, and you've got a tumor, and the cancer is spread to your brain, and we're going to send you to Duke right now. What? I can't tell you what my wife said, but it was quite an oh, impressive moment there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I like to move. I, I hate to be still. Hate it. And um, during this time, my, uh, my brain surgeon, neurosurgeon guy, real smart guy, got brains and everything, he, uh, he kept telling me to slow down. I'm like, I'm at home. I mean, I'm sitting in this chair. I've got nothing. I'm just, 
how much slower can I possibly be? I can't drive, can't do anything on my own. It was, it was crazy, right? And, and every time I'd go back, he'd say, you need to slow down. I don't do what you're saying, right? <laughs> it was just ridiculous. But what he was saying was the scripture that God was dealing with my heart was to be still and know that I'm the Lord. I'm a doer. I do stuff all the time. That's the way I'm wired. I love to serve people. I just love it. To be served was new for me, different. To have people serve me and my family was hard for me. It was hard because I want to be the guy doing that, not you. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. I know it sounds stupid, but that was another new for me. It doesn't have to be much. It's simple. It's just hard. (laughs) So my, my challenge to you today is as we leave behind some old things of 2015, God can do something extraordinarily new in your life. I will always be a person that had cancer. It's always going to be a part of my story. Always. But I'll always be able to view and live life being healed. I'll always be able to experience something new. Set free. And all the excitements and the lessons get to be learned as well. My question for you today is, what's your new? I believe that if we, will, if we will trust in him and trust in his faithfulness, you're going to see some mountains move in your life. God always enables what he commands you to do. His faithfulness breeds confidence. We fully embrace his faithfulness. It projects us forward into a confident expression of love and a patient endurance. All right, so today we're going to be looking into something interesting that, that Peter taught. And uh, it's something called living stones. So uh, when I first started reading through the scripture, I was like, you know, what in the world is that sound? What in the world is living stones, right? And, and I wasn't quite sure exactly where, where God wanted to go with this. So I kind of I kind of went on a little adventure this week, and, and my goal was to find out if I could find some living stones, if people knew about living stones. I wasn't really sure, so we'll just, just watch the video. Hey guys, how you doing? Matt, and I am out at uh, Fay Block here, as you can see behind me, around me. There's all kinds of cool bricks and blocks and stuff. Came here today. I'm in search of living stones. So far, I don't see any. So I'm at a real pretty place downtown, and here's a really cool stones I was told about. Living stones, so let's see. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Okay, evidently these aren't living stones either. Huh. Well, there's a real pretty church over there. Here there's supposed to be a churches. Let's check that. Out. One of the oldest churches in Fayetteville. Let's see here. Here's the chapel. Let's check it out. Hello? Hello? Here at the botanical gardens, and here's a guy working on stones. Just wanted to ask you, have you seen any living stones since you've been out here today? I'm not even really sure what a living stone is, to be honest. Wow. Okay, thank you. So I'm assuming they're that way, okay. I'm guessing this is not for guys. So I'm still at Cape Fear Botanical Gardens, been looking, I see this lady walking. Have you seen any living stones out here today? Um, maybe? No. (laughs) Mike, I've been driving around town all day. Yes, sir. Looking for living stones. I went to the Botanical Garden, I went downtown. I've been all around place. I'm fixing to go over to the rock shop because it's rocks. Right. What? I'm looking for living stones. You know anything about living stones? The only living stone I know is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. A living stone. The living stone. That's a living stone. Yes, it is. Wow. So I came down here because I thought maybe you know rock shop, rock stones, living maybe. I don't know, but I came here. Nobody's here. So. Mm-hmm. I'll keep looking. So I'm at Harris Teeter now by the ball section. I was looking for the section that says living stones. I was wondering if you saw any living stones here, any living stones. 
I haven't seen any living stones. No living stones. I'm afraid not. You know where I can find any? Uh, well, this guy at work, and uh, his name is Stone, maybe. His name is Stone? Yeah, maybe you can find him. I, I want to check him out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, now I'm at Walmart. Nothing about living stones here. Maybe somebody inside knows about living stones. Do you know what a living stone is? No, sir, I have no idea. No idea. Not at all. <laughs> okay, thank you. So my quest for the day has come to an end. I haven't really had uh, great answers. Jesus was one of them. Many people didn't know. I uh, didn't get to hear any stones talk back to me. So um, still, still kind of in search of what, uh, what the Lord means by living stones. So I guess I'll ask you the question. What's a living stone? Living stones, pretty wild, right? Well, over the past few weeks, we've seen some incredible things through the eyes of this guy named Peter. And when he was first found, he was Simon, he was on the water, and uh, this builder guy, Jesus, comes along and he says, hey, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So he does. He like, gets out the boat, follows the guy, and uh, he goes into this life, and not, not too much longer past that, um, Jesus changes his name from Simon to Peter. It's like they had this major shift in identity that happens in Peter's life, and he, he changes the course of things, and he became a pillar for the church, but it really wasn't without some, some struggles and, and some chipping away that happened to this tough old rock, Peter. 